बस प्यार ही प्यार पले a very good evening to all of you i would like to open today's session with these beautiful lines of a very popular old song which is very much relatable to our today's topic of discussion uh my name is asha singh and uh, i am a second year student of mees mit sandhyaneshwar bed college alandi pune i am delighted to welcome all of you to the 10th day session of national level lecture series on topic combating radicalism under the project aurora today we have dr mukul choudhary mechanical engineer to enlighten us on the topic harmony for the better world i on behalf of mees mit sandhyaneshwar bed college extend a very warm, warm welcome to you sir namaste namaste sir i would like to welcome additional dig and police officers from various places who have joined this lecture series i also welcome our principals of me mit sandhyaneshwar bed college and convener of the lecture series dr surendra herkal sir i would like to welcome the coordinator of lecture series professor sanjay shinde sir welcome sir i welcome all the participants from the department of defense and strategic studies savitri bhai phule pune university department of dr baba saheb ambedkar studies Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University. I warmly welcome all the student teachers of Mees MIT Sandhyaneshwar B.Ed College. So, uh, before going ahead with the session, I will request all the participants to keep their mic on mute. Uh, you can unmute your mic, or do uh, you know during the uh, interactive session. The real and the lasting victories are those of peace and not of war. world peace can be achieved when in each person the power of love replaces the love of power with this meditative thought i request you all to join mit world peace prayer pratiksha yes ma'am yeah is my screen visible Yes. 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 Is it visible? Yes.
Now, I would like to request our principal sir to welcome all the participants. Yeah, uh, Asha, principal sir uh, is not there, so on behalf of him, I will welcome. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. A uh, very good evening to each one of you present over here on this online MS Teams platform today. I'm truly delighted to see a number of participants from various sectors present over here for this national level lecture series on combating radicalism. It's my pleasure to welcome you all on the 10th day of this national level lecture series. On behalf of Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University and Miles MIT St. Ganeshwar BA College, I wholeheartedly welcome Brahma Kumar, Dr. B.K. Mukul Bhaiji, from the bottom of my heart. We are very fortunate enough to have Dr. B.K. Mukul for today's session. There is one Chinese proverb. If there is beauty in character, there will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. And if there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. So we are very, very lucky to have a very valued best person like Dr. B.K. Mukul Bhaiji, such a harmonious person who has really, I definitely say that he has devoted his life for the welfare of this world. He's working with Brahma Kumaris from so long. So you might experience the same whenever he will speak with us. It will be a great day to hear from our today's speaker about the harmony for the better world. Also welcome all the eminent police officers who are joined for this online lecture series. I welcome all the participants, including my dear student teachers for this lecture series. All of you know that today's lecture series is organized under Aurora project, and this is the collaboration of six countries like India, Nepal, Czech Republic, Ireland, Romania, and Spain. So once again, a very warm welcome to the renowned speaker, Brahma Kumar, Dr. B.K. Mukul Bhaiji, and all the participants who took out the valuable time and joined us today to be a part of this online national level lecture series on combating rad radicalism. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Asha. Thank you, sir. 
Now I request our mentor, Professor Gangodri Rokre, ma'am, to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Mukul Chaudhary, sir. Yes, thank you, Asha. Uh, good evening and welcome to the tenth day of national level lecture series on combating radicalism. I, Assistant Professor Gangotri Rokre, would like to take the opportunity to welcome honorable guest speaker, Dr. Mukul Chaudhary, sir. He is a mechanical engineer and an instructional designer. Convener of the lecture series, respected principal, Dr. Surendra Hedkar, sir, and coordinator of the lecture series, Assistant Professor Sanjay Shinde, sir, and our most valuable invited guest and participants on behalf of Mayer MIT, Santa Dhyaneshwar B.A. College, Alandi. We have an eminent personality as a chief a guest speaker for today's session, and it's my great privilege to introduce Dr. Mukul Chaudhary, sir. Dr. Mukul Chaudhary, sir, is a mechanical engineer, as I said, and instructional designer, and has his doctoral degree in psychology from Savitribai Phule, Pune University. Just a moment. Yes, sir has 30 years of experience in corporate sector, and presently he is the head of training academy in a leading multinational manufacturing group. He is a meditation student participating Raja Yoga meditation with the Brahma Kumaris since last 31 years. He is presently based at Pune, India. His mission is to assist people in personal re-engineering and connect themselves with the Supreme Almighty. He likes developing uh, learning games and experimenting with yoga. Sir is actively associated with research on Raja Yoga meditation for wellness and performance enhancement. Some of the meditation research were jointly done with organizations like DRDO. Now I would like to request Dr. Mukul Chaudhary sir to proceed with his speech on the topic combating radicalism, harmony for the better world. Please sir and welcome. Namaste and good afternoon to all of you. And it's my great pleasure to be with all of you today. And uh, I'm so blessed that we have a combination of people from different studies. Uh, we have our teaching faculties, our dear students, and some of the countries that you are naming. Uh, professionally, my uh, professional organization also uh, operates in some of those countries. So what a wonderful combination we have with a noble cause to uh, you know eradicate radicalism and uh, so towards this uh, primarily it so happens that um, uh, the extreme thoughts which come up in human mind are primarily because we believe that uh, what we think is right and therefore we go ahead with our conviction to you know execute those thoughts and often our beliefs are not based on facts. Often our beliefs are not based on experiences, uh, but it could be based on uh, one or two single incident experiences or certain sharing of information that we believe uh, in the form of a story that we believe that this is how it has happened. It colors our mind. Huh? And this happens from our childhood as we grow up and uh, you know this is very critical the childhood upbringing and where our uh, you know results or belief systems are colored to a big extent and throughout the life we often uh, live with those belief systems uh, many of the belief systems are replaced with our new beliefs based on experiences based on experience experimentation and based on facts so I would present the topic today, and uh, it, it's a wonderful series which uh, MIT is, uh, has initiated um, to eradicate radicalism, and that you already have nine speakers who have presented a priori, and therefore uh, I would present it from a perspective, uh, from within, inside out perspective. So I'm putting on uh, the, the slideshow, just a moment. And I will uh, share some of the thoughts in terms of inner engineering, re-engineering that we can do. Uh, 
to make the world a better place to live. Right, vision for a better world. Uh, this is the topic, and in this topic, uh, I would be touching these four aspects. Uh, first is nature of consciousness. What went wrong? because of which uh, the condition of the world has in some area deteriorated, though we are extremely progressive in science, technology, and many other facts. But somehow, in some area, we are not happy with the way we live. Our quality of life, though, has improved. But, you know, the quality of uh, mental health has not grown to that extent. We will understand that. And then how to restore that original setting, you know, all the devices today, particularly the electrical electronic devices today has an option which says restore factory settings. So what is that restore factory setting button that we can do small things that we can do to experience innate original self and fourth is what could be the wonderful consequences that we will experience. Uh, if we work towards these areas. And definitely this will bring in uh, a wonderful world. And I will present this uh, in this sequence. So let us start in understanding about consciousness because as uh, ma'am has introduced me, I'm an, uh, from an engineering background. And therefore, um, uh, I always prefer to you know, understand the thing. Uh, from the functionality part of it, how it works. And once we know how things work, how stuffs work, we will be able to know what's wrong in the stuff if it is not working the way it is supposed to. So first we need to know what is the characteristic of each of our uh, you know, constitution, each of our orientation. And therefore uh, I thought that it would be a good idea you know, to present our configuration, our inner configuration. So it is like this, that we hear the word consciousness a lot of time. And so we have a physical body and inside this body, inside the brain, we have certain cognitive abilities, uh, uh, higher cognitive abilities, which are called as consciousness. And in the Indian spirituality or spirituality across the world, it is believed that the consciousness is different from the body. The body is the residing place of the consciousness, but we are truly the consciousness. We are the conscious being, and this body is a vehicle to host the conscious being, to host the consciousness. It is like a container, and the consciousness is the content, if, if I could give that analogy. So the body and the consciousness constitutes the being, the human being, and in, in terms of consciousness, when we say consciousness, what is it that the consciousness constitutes of? Primarily, the consciousness as per the Indian spirituality has three aspects. And these three aspects are the faculty of thinking, the faculty of decision making. These two can be termed as cognition, cognitive abilities. And the third is a very special faculty, which is called as the faculty of imprint. I will explain this a little more detail. So these three departments, they work in sync, they work in synergy to uh, help us achieve, to help us do our day-to-day -day work, to help us being a fully functional human being. So thinking, decision-making and creation of certain imprints. Now, what are these imprints? We will see the detail of each of these faculties of consciousness in the subsequent slides. Let us first talk about the thought, thinking. Now, the department of thinking is called as mind. In Hindi, we call it as man in India. It is the mind. The function of this department is to generate thoughts. From where does it generate thoughts? We will see in a picture subsequently. And thoughts are the smallest unit of cognitive activity. In other words, thought is the simplest unit of a cognitive activity. 
it has been shown it has been represented in the form of waves like each c wave comes then the other comes then the other comes there could be multiple waves also in that way thoughts keeps generating keeps generating the source of the thought is of course uh, little later we will see that so the first department of consciousness is the thinking ability and thought generation ability the second department of consciousness is buddhi which is also called as intellect an intellect primarily is also known as critical faculty which judges filters decides what we want to do so it is like this just imagine there are a lot of thoughts there are a lot of for acting it out to the action karm mein laate hain it is like this that if you can imagine it in the form of a physical balance which has been shown here so there is a situation which you have to decide for example on a sunday there is an offer to go to picnic but on monday you have a critical exam so you have a situation uh, where there is a conflict and so picnic is attracting me at the same time i am cognizant about the fact that there is an exam on monday and i need to prepare for that now what is it that judges which action i should take should i go to the picnic or shouldn't i go now this is something that would depend on my individual value system my individual preference between the importance of exam and my readiness and the you know the attraction towards picnic so it is like weighing the situation against my value system and friends as we can understand rightly you know the if these weights and measures are not proper if there is a you know the calibration is not right then definitely the situation will not be evaluated correctly because it is from my reference it is from my perspective yes, and therefore there are chances kiske tarah hai ah load karu ke de de nadaf ma'am razia nadaf you can put it in mute please thank you so uh, the values are my measuring stones for evaluation of anything that i do so any judgment which is taken any decision which is taking any problem solving uh, which is applied because there are multiple situations there are crisis situations there are options in which we use that specific faculty which is different from just superficial thinking and therefore it is called as intellect or in hindi it is known as buddhi and the problem today is that we are intellectuals but because the value system are so wide and the value system is so much diversified that and we have at times you know moved away from our core values as a result the reference which we are taking in ascertaining a situation whether it is right or wrong or whether it would be appropriate rather instead of black and white calling it right and wrong therefore the differences and some of the extreme situations which which i think will benefit me but it would be of immense pain for others are happening so uh, and this is uh, the issue of intellect jise uh, hum in hindi it is known as bhrasht buddhi buddhi bhrasht hona right so we go to the third department uh and just a moment the third department is sanskars now before we understand what is sanskar which is the imprint part of it once we have decided 
suppose we have decided that okay i am not going to picnic i will prioritize doing a study over picnic this is my individual decision based on my value system i have decided to adhere to uh, you know study so this is what the intellect is helping me and i am enacting it there as i enact that it forms an impression over me because i in this particular situation took a decision to stay with my studies and refrain from you know going to picnic so this created an impression into my cognitive recording which is called as sanskar and when we repeat an act or when we repeat a thought it gets reinforced and at some point of time it becomes a habit which we will see at a later time so the sequence of happening that happens in the inner science is like this first we think then there is a measurement tool which judges whether we should reject this thought or we should take it forward is it good to go or not and basis the decision of accepting or rejecting or the alternatives which is finally selected we enact it in the form of action and as we perform the action there is an impression which is created which is called as resolves or sanskars and when a similar type of activity or a similar type of thought process or a similar type of behavior is repeated multiple times it forms something which is called as habit it forms something which is known in the indian culture as sanskar so sanskar is like this it is represented as several layers of a spiral which means that when we perform it repeatedly it reinforces and reinforces and reinforces so sanskar is the ability to record to reinforce it is highly consistent sanskar is highly consistent and between the mind faculty between the intellect faculty and between the sanskar faculty the sanskar faculty is the strongest among the three and the beauty of this is you know you uh, you have certain uh, modes of operating cars you have certain modes of operating machines or or certain other devices um, there is something called a sos mode uh, an emergency mode emergency stop in the elevators we have all seen so in case of any crisis situation be it extreme crisis situation any type of traumatic experiences or crisis situation the cognitive abilities they get subsided and it is the sanskar who takes over as a default mode in case of any type of uh, i would say crisis situation it is the default mode that takes over and and so, so since it is very powerful among the other three things we will understand the sanskar with some examples to take it forward it is believed in 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 bharat in india and in the eastern uh, philosophy that we intrinsically all human beings have an extremely beautiful sanskar extremely beautiful true nature of the self of the consciousness is that of peace is that of bliss is that of love is that of purity we seek knowledge and we love to be strong we, we seek might you may say ki are these values or these are innate qualities you know i was you know searching certain words and i was searching the difference between values and virtues and you also please do this search sometimes later and it would be very interesting to know that virtues are the divine qualities are the good qualities but values means my preference it always need not be quality let me give you an example there was a person who loved drinking alcohol 
and he had a collection of a mini bar at his home. So the statement for him would be, he values liquors. But drinking liquor is not a virtue. So we have to understand the difference between value and virtue. In Hindi, there are two different words. One is called as gun, which, which signifies the English term virtue. And the other term is called as mulya, which signifies value. So for example, I value, suppose there are two devices and my preference is to use an Android over an iOS, then my statement would be, look, I value using an Android. So my value system prefers to use an Android. Huh? So, but then it, it does not mean, that, so the value could be often to materialistic things also. But virtue is always related to divinity. It is related to inner well-being. It is related to true inner qualities of the self, of the consciousness. And these six values which we are seeing here, uh, peace, bliss, which is happiness basically, inner joy, love, purity, might and knowledge, these are the innate qualities of the consciousness. And therefore, the consciousness always tries to restore this as soon as it, 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 there is a reduction of experience of any of these values. Just like we need rest at night to rejuvenate again physically. In the same way, the consciousness always tries to restore its original innate self by experimenting, by experiencing these qualities again. But since the experimenter are, we are the experimenters, it may try any means to experience peace. For example, suppose there is a quarrel between two people. They are very angry with each other. They start hating each other. They were good friends. But because of certain difference of opinion or certain dispute of property, uh, they have separated up and they are now two different lobbies and they start hating each other. It so happens that they lose peace. They go to the court and they're losing money. They're losing peace of mind. Uh, they are not at talking terms with each other. And now both of them are looking to the other person as an enemy. And they believe that if the other enemy is not there anymore, then I will again experience peace. So they are trying to kill the other person. They are trying to eliminate the other person. They think that by eliminating that physical entity, my problem will go out and I will again restore peace. So I as an individual is ready to, you know, take any sort of activity to restore peace, though that may in the long term create lot of pain, lot of anguish, lot of wrong actions, but the sole objective is again to restore peace. Somebody is bribing in some part to get his job done. Because he believes by getting his job, job done in a particular place, he would be happy. He would experience, you know, comfort. He would experience peace. So just try to understand that if you ask a why, why, why question, in fact, in statistics or in analysis, this why, why analysis is quite common in industry and a failure mode analysis that is done. So why the thing has failed because of this? Why this has happened because of this? Why this has happened because of this? And then when you don't have any further answer, it can be assumed that that is the root cause of the problem. So if we start analyzing this why why analysis towards any incident, any untoward incident which has happened in our society, in our country, in the nation, in the globe, we will come finally land up to these innate qualities beyond which we will not be able to proceed. 
these are the rock bottom i would say truth which we exist on so this is the intrinsic nature of the sanskar but what has happened these four elements that i mentioned the mind which is the thinking faculty the intellect and the actions which is named here as karma and of course the resolves which get recorded they interact with each other in multiple ways the typical i would say stereotype way of interacting is a thought comes up then we decide then we perform and it gets recorded into the recording machine or the recording faculty which is sanskar this is the typical interaction however it does not stop because it's a closed loop system so what happens then the sanskar which is formed it then stimulates the intellect to create certain beliefs which was not there because i am i am reading i am grasping some information i am thinking on them i am contemplating i am performing my actions accordingly and my habit is getting formed now the habit is driving the logic to behave to think in a particular way so my machine of weighing my value systems are getting altered whether it is it could be in a positive direction it could be in a negative direction but definitely my sanskaras are influencing my intellect are influencing my value system are influencing my decision making system and it is continuously working throughout also simultaneously the thought machine which is the mind is getting influenced from sanskars let me give you an example suppose i ask you to close your eyes and just think about your house where you stay just visualize that you are returning home you are reaching in front of your main gate you are opening the door and your near and dear ones one of them is opening the you know door lock for you from inside when you are visualizing this where is this experience restored where is this impression restored in the memory in the sanskar so in this way the sanskar is having certain recordings which is called as memories so our earlier recordings which are there from our childhood till now these recordings also play a very important aspect to bias our thoughts you know you are sitting you did not have any any specific thought suddenly some of your old friends images impressions thought came up in your mind so the thought also gets stimulated from your recording which is the sanskar and whatever you think repeatedly also forms a habit also forms a sanskar so since this closed loop system mm -hmm. works so intrinsically and they are interacting they are continuously interacting with each other any change any deformity in any of this particular aspect particularly the intellect or the sanskar any deformity any malfunctioning of any of these elements would result in performing negative karmas would result in performing not so elevated thoughts would result in wrong decision making and finally all these things would impact to form a deformed personality a personality which is not altruistic a personality which is not pro social a personality which is not fully functional it would be a suboptimal development of an individual which could create immense damage to that self to his near and dear ones to the society where he lives and in general to the whole world but as i mentioned in the previous uh, image in the previous slide that our true innate nature is that of perfection so the whole process of spirituality the whole process of wellness is based on restoring that factory setting back to normal let me also explain what is the issue you know habits affect your thought process and just let us read this great saying we first make our habit and then our habits make us 
So if there is a particular belief system uh, which is ingrained in us, which is suboptimal, it will create our behavior, it will influence our behavior and basis the behavior, the habit will be formed to look in a particular way towards certain part of, of, of people of the world in a different way, certain communities in a different way. And then the concept of communalism will arise on the individual's mind. I want to show you a couple of, uh, uh, rather a single video and just see how a two-wheeler driver is behaving in a particular manner. And the question comes, he is fully aware of the risks involved into this type of riding a bike. But in spite of that, why does this individual behave the way that they do? Let us see the small video. Uh, uh, there is no sound, so you can just, uh, you know, cherish the video. That should be fine. I'm just playing the video. Uh, there was some buffering, which I'm seeing in the, uh, uh, in the other laptop here, but were you able to see if one of you could please unmute and give me a response? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would show you another video of a one minute, uh, same way behavior. This was a bike behavior. And now I'm showing you a behavior of a car driver uh, amidst a place which is extremely exclusively meant for cyclists. Uh, this is a Sunday morning and the road has been earmarked for usage by cyclists for wellness and health. And just see this particular car, how it drives and what is the behavior of the individual. Just have a look. This disturbing video of a car quickly weaving dangerously around cyclists during Sunday's bike to drive. Apparently this car went through the roadblocks and they were there intended to protect bike riders from traffic like that. Just got to look at the person behind the wheel. Now, people reported this to police, but they have not been able to find the driver. One of the cyclists told us that there were kids on the drive, too, and it could have turned out tragic. Right. So, uh, of course, this is not a road safety session, which I'm doing. But my perspective of showing this couple of, you know, behavior is that why is it? an individual enters into certain risky behavior, which can, you know, harm that individual himself. And you can see there is another boy sitting behind in the, in the bike. He's not alone. He's not just checking his own adrenal line, but there is another person behind him. And he's also risking the lives of others who are in the uh, other road users. Now, this type of behavior, as I mentioned, if I go back to this slide, it is basically the habit which is formed. It is basically the stimulation which the brain uh, requires. Um, uh, you can call it as adrenaline rush. And once he performs certain activities, these individuals feel good. And because they feel good or they believe it is normal, they go ahead with this behavior because to them, the feeling good, because the feeling good experience is a part of sanskar, is a very intrinsic experience of the sanskar because feeling good is happiness, feeling good is bliss. But then this bliss, what they are experiencing, momentary bliss is extremely detrimental, which they are not able to control because their intellect, intellect that we saw here, uh, in the form of a uh, physical balance, their value systems do not oppose the act that they are doing. For, for this individual, it's absolutely normal. And uh, in India, we say chalta hai, ye to hota hi hai. That chalta hai value system is very much ingrained into this. So therefore, the change process has to start from our inner self in the form of uh, the intellect, in the form of the quality of thoughts, in the form of inculcation of positive habits, and then the final outcome 
would be extremely powerful and good karma, good actions. And that would bring us a wonderful world that we live in. Here we are seeing a brain image, a functional brain image, wherein there are certain neuronal networks that we are able to see. Now, typically what happens, I am trying to explain the behavior of this bike rider who has been doing rash driving and weaving across the traffic dangerously. Now, in this case, what happens, his brain forms. So first time when he does this riding for the first time, there is a particular impression which is formed. There is a particular neuronal network which is formed. And once this neuronal network which is formed, which is actually the electrical activity through which the nerve, the brain, uh, the central nervous system sends the uh, information to the muscles to enact. Now, second time when this uh, person performs the same act, this neuronal pathways get reinforced. Third time when he does the same act, Again, it gets further reinforced and it becomes something which is called as a default neuronal network. Let us see a comparison of a default neuronal network in the form of a small trail that has been created in a green field. There was no road, there was no impression, it was fully green, but because people started walking through these greens, this land has formulated into a uh, a temporary road and this will widen further depending on the number of traffic or the type of movements which is happening and it, this would continue to remain unless otherwise we withdraw from using this particular trail as a shortcut as a route for walking or usage in the same way the actions that we perform the thoughts that we perform form certain very strong habits and once these strong habits and belief systems are already formulated, we become immune to those and we do not cross check whether these actions, these beliefs, uh, the, this thought process requires an improvement. We think this is the right way to do it. And therefore, certain disaster activities can even happen because of our thoughts because of our neural and network programming, which might have happened at childhood. And I did not get a chance, you know, to elicit that. So when I have money, when I have power, when I have networking, I try to elicit those beliefs, which was ingrained in me. And therefore, it can, it can create a lot of havoc in the society. So the whole, you know, today we are talking about neuro leadership wherein programming the brain, programming the cognition, programming the consciousness is very important and living a life basis of, on the basis of moral values, ethical values and consciousness is the new leadership mantra that will help us to bring a wonderful world. Now, in order to do this, what is very important is to have self-reflection because anybody influencing us from outside will color his or her own thoughts on us. It is very important as intellectuals to reflect, contemplate, and not only stop there, but to experiment it and see the consequences and then only accept it as a standard, better method. And also at the same time, be open to experience other methods which is which in the uh, you know uh, in personality is called as the big five uh, you know openness to experience is one of the very unique innate qualities which only human beings have and it's very important to have that openness but unfortunately this openness to experience quality has been used for uh, you know drug addiction and experimenting with addictive things it's that is not the objective of openness of experience Openness to experience is you share an idea which is different from my current belief system. If I am in a position, you know, to uh, at least park your idea, I, I don't need to believe it. At the same time, I don't need to reject it too. I can try it out. If it works for me, it is good. If it doesn't work for me, probably it might be okay with you, but not for me. 
So this is something which is openness to experience rather than referring to some scriptures and you know finalizing because the scripture says this and you do not follow this. So then you are not uh, in my uh, you know club. So you are not you are out you are in. So the decision of in and out should not be based on uh, should not be based definitely on on uh, on individual perceptions and on certain decisions on the scripture, but it needs to be also reinforced and revalidated based on certain experiences. This is my last slide. We believe in India in the yoga principle that. the supreme source of wellness is the supreme the almighty the omnipotent uh, who is perfect and once we focus our attention once we connect with the supreme our original i was talking about restoring factory settings so he is the supreme factory of happiness of love of peace and when we connect to that factory intellectually buddhi yog thinking about that when we connect our focus with the supreme we get charged up we get restored into the innate original qualities of divine love of peace of happiness of wellness and all other positive aspects like purity peace prosperity so this is the basic way in which and once we do this contemplation reflection openness to experience reflecting about our own strengths our own areas of development experimenting with certain ideas which i have not tried out earlier and then on the basis of experimentation accepting it the once this openness comes and we check our thoughts we check our actions uh, we check our uh, cognitions and then definitely there would be a wonderful transformation and this will also help individuals to develop something which is called as eight functional powers ashta shakti in hindi these eight functional powers are uh, are extremely potent that would help us to improve our quality of life for example tolerance cooperation decision making uh discriminate ability to dis identify what is right and what is wrong power to accommodate power to concentrate and and so like so these eight powers are functional powers which comes through contemplation which comes through connecting through the supreme and once we are able to equip our consciousness with these eight powers we will be much more fully functional uh, spiritually mentally and physically and that would result in a wonderful place to live a place of harmony a place of love a place of happiness a place of longevity and um, you may be aware that in india in bharat it is said that some around few thousand years back the people who lived here they, they had an age of 150 years without aging they were youth up to 150 years and we have seen many of our uh, maybe two three generations earlier that they were quite healthy they had a longer life of course the mortality rates were higher because of certain uh, treatments not available but then those who lived they lived quite healthy happy and even at their higher age of 100 plus age they were able to move work do the things and they were quite happy because they were with nature without disturbing nature and uh, they they experienced their inner self and this is the concept of a better world which can be experienced not from outside to within but from within to outside inside out so uh, i would thank again to all the organizers dr surendra herkal ji uh, gangotri ma'am Uh, sanjay ji uh, and of course our dear students asha ji and pratiksha ji for giving a wonderful introduction and to all my uh, audience uh, for patiently hearing me out thank you so much for your time have a great weekend namaste thank you so much sir thank you sir sir thank you sir
for sharing so much informative knowledge and your valuable insight with us. Uh, now the forum is open for the interactive session. Uh, anybody having any question to be asked by uh, from so uh, you can type it in the chat box or you can also ask. Please unmute yourself before before asking the question. Uh, a very good afternoon, sir. May I say something? It's really very please, nice work. Please go ahead, uh, Anjali. Yeah, sir. As I am a science student only, and really it is a very good for me. I was, I'm very happy to know everything about this all events and all. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Anjali ji. Any other question? OK, uh, so uh, as there is no question, so now I would request uh, Professor Gangotri Rokre ma'am to give a vote of thanks. Yes, thank you, Asha. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's my great honor to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of Mayer's MIT Santa Dhyaneshwar B.A. College Alandi, I, Assistant Professor Gangotri Rokre, would like to thank Dr. Mukul Chaudhary sir for his knowledgeable, informative, and insightful speech. Based on the topic Combating Radicalism, Harmony for the Better World, I became really speechless when I heard about all the details he has explained with such a simplicity. Mostly, sir has emphasized on the nature of consciousness, what are the departments of consciousness. In very simple words, he explained about the departments of consciousness, mind, intellect, action, and sanskars. What is the difference between values and virtues also, he has explained in very simple words. Very rightly said, sir, we first make our habits and then our habit makes us. We all have experienced this. Thank you for explaining about the Ashta Shaktis, that is functional powers. We were knowing about it, but not in such a simple words. So we are very, very thankful to you for your words of wisdom. Thank you once again, sir. Now I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Surendra Herkar, sir, principal of MIT Santa Dhyaneshwar Beard College and the convener of national level lecture series for the encouragement and for taking initiative in conducting such an important lecture series. I'm also grateful to the coordinator, assistant professor Sanjay Shinde, sir, for his continuous efforts. All the teaching staff members and non teaching staff members for their valuable participation and great support throughout the series. I would like to uh, propose vote of thanks to the participants of Department of Defense and Strategic Studies from Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, then Department of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Studies, Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, additional DIGs and police officers for their participation, and last but not the least, my dear student teachers from MIT Santa Dhyaneshwar Beard College. So thank you very much, everyone. Take care of your health and your soul too. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Namaste. Have a great day. Yes, sir. Yes, thank Asha. you once again, sir. And I would like to thank every participant for attending this session and making it success. Uh, now I would request everyone uh, if they can switch on their camera and we can have a photo for our memories. <laughs> yes. Anybody will click the photo? Uh, Do you yeah. want me to click? Yes, ma'am, if you can. Yeah. Yeah, just a moment. Yes, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, Thank you, Asha, Pratiksha, and all the other students for your participation. Thank, Thank you, you Sanjay, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir.
Thank you. Bye bye, all of you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty